Welcome back to our Fast API series. In the last video, we explored how to create and manage routes using different HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete. Today, we're taking a closer look at how to handle more dynamic data with path and query parameters in Fast API. These tools are essential for building flexible APIs that can adapt to different inputs. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about path parameters. Path parameters are dynamic parts of a URL that FastAPI can capture and pass to your functions. This is useful when you want to create routes that depend on variable data, like user IDs or product codes. Here's an example to show how it works. First, we import FastAPI from the FastAPI module. Then we create a new app instance from the FastAPI class. Next, we define a get route for slash users slash user ID with a path parameter named user ID. We specify int to indicate that user ID is expected to be an integer. If you are not familiar with this type hinting, you can look into Python's type hinting for more details. So our function returns a JSON response containing the user ID. In this example, user ID is a path parameter. When a request is made to slash user slash one, FastAPI extracts one as the user ID and passes it to the read user function. This allows your application to respond dynamically based on the user ID provided in the URL. To see this in action, run your FastAPI app and navigate to atplash127.zo.118thou slash user slash one you'll see a JSON response with the user ID you provided. Path parameters are a powerful way to create routes based on variables. For instance, if you replace one with any other number like 100, you'll see that number in the JSON response. Let's also see an example using a string path parameter. Here, item name is a path parameter that captures a string. If you navigate to h splash 1170.1.8000 slash items book, you'll see the JSON response with the item name book. Now let's move on to query parameters. Query parameters are used to filter or refine the data returned by an endpoint. Unlike path parameters, which are part of the URL structure, query parameters are appended to the URL after a D. Let's modify our example to use a required query parameter. Here, we create a get route for slash user slash, but use query parameters instead of path parameters. We use query parameters specified directly in the read user function. For example, a user ID that should be an integer and a name that will be a string. The function takes those params and returns a JSON object containing both the user ID and the name. To test this, navigate to HTTP call slash 127.1 slash users slash user ID equals one and name John you'll receive a response that includes both the user ID and the name. For example, with the name John, the JSON response will contain the user ID one and the name John. If you change the name to Adam, you'll see the updated result. Let's also consider an example where the name query parameter is optional. In this case, name is an optional query parameter with a default value of none. If a name is provided, it will be included in the response. If not, the response will only include the user ID. For example, navigating to HTTP at 127.0.1.8000 slash users slash user ID equals one and name equals John will include name John, while HTAP 17.0.1.1 thousand slash user ID equal one will return just the user ID. Now let's try to combine path and query parameters. Combining these allows you to create more specific and flexible routes. Here's an example where we use both path and query parameters. In this example, we have a route users user ID slash details that uses user ID as a path parameter and include email as a query parameter. The include email parameter is optional and defaults to false. To test this, navigate to 127.01.8000 slash users one details include email equals true you'll receive a JSON response with the user ID and the include email flag set to email included. If you omit the include email query parameter, it will default to email not included. 
combining path and query parameters in your routes provides flexibility and power to your API design. Path parameters help you build routes that adapt to specific resources, while query parameters allow you to refine and filter the results based on client requests. This combination enhances your API's capability to handle various scenarios and provides a better experience for users. As you know, one of FastAPI's standout features is its automatically generated interactive documentation. This documentation can be accessed by navigating to slash docs in your browser while your FastAPI server is running. It allows you to explore your API, test routes, and see the expected input and output formats. For example, you can find all the routes we've created, including those with both path and query parameters. You can easily test them by selecting the appropriate route, filling in the required parameters, and clicking Execute. FastAPI will return the response directly within the documentation page, making it an invaluable tool for development and debugging. In this video, we've explored how to use path and query parameters in FastAPI to create more dynamic and flexible routes. We've seen how to test these parameters both in the browser and using FastAPI's built-in interactive documentation. These techniques are fundamental for building robust APIs that can handle a variety of client requests. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into request and response bodies in FastAPI. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you in the next one.